We run the clock. Super 16 is the cream of the crop. College football time of year don't stop. We're We're adding this guy. Just another go down with the courage. All skill and will. Bringing you the best 16. Serving up a plate for the football fiends. Breaking the best 16 college teams. Football fans, this is the show where you dream. Ain't no bias. Chris Zorris drinking truth. Traded in the golden helmet in the past for a suit. With the tape, never lies. College ball, he's a stoop. Breaking the top 16, not the top 32. I'll mean to cut you off like a Zorris jersey, but you ain't really grinding unless the jersey dirty. Hit the running back like a Mack truck behind the 30 yard line. It's game time. I see Roddy off the side. You look at Chris. Like this with a fact checklist Going over college teams like a big scientist Steve streaking from his head Like in his playing days Super 16 poles on the show straight away It's the FBS The best of the best from the ACC to the SEC Pac-12, Big 10, Mount West, Sun Belt And the Big 12, open your eyelids Who the best like the clock? Super 16 is the cream of the crop College football time of year don't stop With Christopher Zurich Just another go down with the courage Hard skill and will, bringing you the best 16, serving up a plate for the football teams, breaking the best 16 college teams, football fans, this the show with your dreams. Hello and welcome everyone to week eight of the Super 16 poll show. We had some interesting things going on this week, but before we get to that, in college football, Phil Toshin, our, uh, what should I say, Chicago Bear TTNL God or or, or, or <laughs> overseer? I mean, I don't, know, I don't know what, I mean, DDP doesn't do you justice. Well, I'm definitely not a god. No, you okay. might be closest right there. Okay. The three-time All-American. Your, your rant was amazing. Did you enjoy my Bears Hour Live rant? It was, I think it lasted an hour. Didn't it last an hour or something like that? I don't even know how long it lasted because, you know, people come up with this idea that it's some sort of scripted <laughs> shtick. And I'm like, you don't know me if you think that's, that's... 100% from the heart. <laughs> exactly. There is no place. Remember what did Dorothy? She had the clicker heels and say there's no place like home. There you go. No, <laughs> that's no place thing. like Soldier Field. No place like Soldier Field. <laughs> yeah, Chris, it was honestly a very difficult watch for fans. But fans have every right to be upset with the empty promises, the lies, and all of the politics that it seems like you experienced as well as a player with the Chicago Bears. There's only but so much when technology comes into play that fans can be oblivious to. And in this case, I think the Chicago Bears are upset that the TTNL exists because somebody's got to hold their feet to the fire. And listen, some I, I just speak from my truthful place of football, and it has to get better. It needs to get better. And the Chicago Bears owe it to their fan base who travel so well and are so loyal. The one thing you can do is be honest. And I think this coach falls victim not only to the covid and kind of like having to get out of that you know what we call it the scope <laughs> the and, and play victim today and not saying he's lying i'm just saying that's not going to take the pressure off of him sure you know what i'm saying the reality is bears fans really want to see and 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 they have every right as well as myself, to see somebody who's prepared. What they saw on Sunday was a death match, really. You were out in, you know, it's like Tyson versus Lennox Lewis. <laughs> it's like 30 seconds, you're out. And it can't be that way uh, with the Chicago Bears. It was just, it's so disheartening. It ruins people's weeks. 
what did that true. feel like? What did it, what did it feel like to you? You know, you're di- I guess you're wired differently, but I know you spoke on players and you caring, but but when you know that fans love this team so much so, right? That the energy of your performance affects them. Now I know you have to like get over it, but does it affect you if you No, sure, play? absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, and there were times, I mean, I went through, I think the last, my last two seasons with Dave Wonstadt, I mean, we were four and 12. So the idea of trying to get fired up for a game was hard. And, you know, we had a coach at the time who didn't know, you know, anything about, well, anything about being a head coach. So, I mean, he was throwing out stuff that we were just, this is ridiculous. So it was almost like we were playing for each other. And it felt like high school or college at that point. You know, I mean, you're yeah. supposed to be a professional. I mean, everybody's supposed to, supposed to be able to, to do their job. And you have a head coach that not really is there for motivation, but but just making crazy moves, you know, um, sitting folks who, who should totally be playing. Uh, it, it just it, it was just a really bad scene. And so right now in the locker room, you know, the, the hardest thing they're trying not to do is start pointing fingers. Right. right, because as soon as you do that, you're going to lose the team, and it's going to be worse. But I mean, it, it's one of those things where you have to take a look at it. And again, we, we've talked about this before with college, but literally, you have to go back to fundamentals and make sure you have the individuals or the best individuals that can play. I mean, I know I shot you a text and said, "Hey, I just heard that the offensive tackle had COVID I or know. was in, in the COVID protocol," and I'm like. This is like two hours before the game. Like, what? Like, how does that happen? And and Justin Fields didn't know about it either till the game. And then to not be prepared and play the kid bars who had been playing that second, like the extra tight end. Right, right. But but he's been in the games. But we'll take this kid from the practice squad who basically hasn't played since preseason and put him against one of the best pass rushers in the you couldn't make this up if you tried to make it up. And lo and behold, Chris, you don't even help the kid. You don't even chip for the, him. There's a reason the dude's on a practice squad. He's just not ready yet. He's not. Right? Regardless if he was a first-year guy or whatever, but there's a reason why he's on the practice squad. You just feel he's not ready, and you, you need a body for practice. And yeah. all of a sudden it's like, hey, uh, have at it. Yeah, Lachavius, uh, let's put you at right tackle. You're going to block Shaq Barrett today. And then you're going to block uh, our guy. What's his name? J- uh, Pierre Paul. <laughs> they're, just, they're just teeing off on Justin Fields. I mean, <sighs> in the NFL and in any, and this will be my last point, in any game, but especially in the NFL where these are men and they're coming off the edge on a young quarterback blindsiding him, knocking him down, knocking the football out, it's going to turn the tides of the game. That's what. That's why they pay those pass rushers millions of dollars. And your plan was to put this guy out there and block one on one. It. Forget the fact that you started him. I'll even let that go. The fact that you started him without understanding, we got to help him. Sure, He's right. a show. He should be. This coach should be gone. Sorry, coach. I'm. I hope you get better. And by the way, here's your pink slip. That's that's how it should be, and that's how this team should be moving forward because it's the same old BS. It's the same old Bears BS. And Ted Phillips and George, gentleman George, and all this politics and corporate world and and cute little slogans don't win football games they don't you got to get a maniacal head coach in there it's the most important thing in football sure. is the head coach without it you are like chris is telling you dave no, wants to it's going on deaf ears and and i my father said it and i i think you saw him it's like these guys aren't playing for him they didn't care. And it's unfortunate because Justin Fields is the kid that's getting neglected sure. in this whole right. process. Right. And it's and that's why they need to do better. And that's why I'm asking everyone to hashtag fire Nagy. 
hashtag it up, keep getting it going and really get a better job. There's some college coaches that really could do a better job with this football team and a talented roster, Chris. It should never have looked like that, but it has, and it has several times. And this has looked worse than the Cleveland game when you didn't think it could get worse. Right, than right, exactly. No, I, I, would, I would have to agree with that one. I would have to agree with that one. <laughs> but yeah, that's my mini calm rant tonight. I was going to be calm until For Wednesday. those night. folks who haven't seen the actual rant, please check it out at Bears Hour Live. I mean, it, it's, it is... It's uh, it's something special to see. Well, I appreciate it, Chris. You are the man. Every week, this guy comes on here. No bias. Chris Zorch speaking truth, just like the lyric says on the Super 16 poll show. Every Monday night, we change the hours to help families in need, and specifically mine. Specifically? <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> this show is brought to you by the National Football Foundation, College Football Hall of Fame, who, by the way, Chris Zorich is a College Football Hall of Famer, and the Football Writers Association. And we got more people wanting to be a part of this amazing show. And we'll be talking about that maybe next week after I meet with this guy. I think There's a lot of exciting things. Or you for. So I'm assuming you froze. it was you, me. Yes, you are frozen. Oh, man, don't tell me that. Dude. Did you Come hook on. in? Did you bring your cord down? I, I got everything, man. Everything's all set. <laughs> yeah, this should not a, be happening, man. Froze a couple times. I felt like I was... What was that song from Frozen? Uh, I can't wow. be... Yeah, I don't... I, I, don't, I was I don't, trying I don't, to think of it, but I... My daughter's 19. I don't know. I didn't even see it. Sorry. You never saw Frozen? I have, I mean, I don't leave, you know. I don't Look at this stuff. No, that's the wrong one. I'm singing the Little Mermaid or something. Same idea, exactly. Let, let it go. go. Look go. at Sheree. I better let it go right now. <laughs> <laughs> let me let Chris go and do his thing. Every week, though, he gives you the unbiased look at the top 16 college football teams in the country. This is an amazing sport. Probably my favorite thing in the world is college football with the bands, the rivalries, yes. the upsets. And believe me, we had and some we exciting had some, football, some right? Stuff this week. We yes, we did. Stuff to talk about tonight. So let's shoot and, and this actually take a look at last week's. Do we have last week's uh, week seven of our poll? Uh, just to let folks know where we're at. So we had Purdue, obviously Purdue, had an amazing game against Iowa. That was awesome. We had Texas A&M, Old Miss, Kentucky, Wake Forest, Michigan, Oklahoma State. Michigan State's on this great run right now. Penn State was doing well. As I said before, Iowa lost that game uh, against Purdue, Oregon, Ohio State, Oklahoma, Cincinnati. Number two, Alabama, and number one was Georgia, and they had a bye week. So let's assume what is going to happen in week eight. But we start off with number 16. Number 16, Iowa State. So we have an unranked team coming in. Their debut at 16. Uh, they knocked off number 10, Oklahoma State. Um, it was a close game. And... I'm giving them credit because it was, I mean, it, Oklahoma State should have won that game, um, but they didn't. And it's interesting because I don't know if Iowa State's that bad or if they're that good. Um, they lost to Iowa by 10, and their only other loss was to Baylor by two. So they're actually a pretty good team. Um, and they could actually run the table. But unfortunately, on November 20th, they have the uh, – they actually play Oklahoma. So in the Big 12, it's kind of crazy, but I think Iowa State kind of got themselves on the map by beating a number 10 Oklahoma State team. So it's going to be interesting to see how they run, but they have Texas up next. So let's take a look at the team that they beat. At number 15. 
Number 15, Oklahoma State. Now, they actually dropped five spots down to 15. Uh, I don't think they weren't ready. Um, and here's the thing. They actually played some really decent teams, and they actually beat them. I mean, they, they were going in this game. They were um, uh, they were 6-0 going into this game. So I thought they were really going to do well. And literally the only thing they can kind of wait for right now is the battle of Bedlam because they don't play anyone else who's going to be ranked until they play um, Oklahoma. And that's really going to have a chance to kind of, if they beat Oklahoma, then they may have a chance to really kind of have a great season. But right now, I mean, losing to an unranked Iowa team is really tough. And then when you look at it, um, let's see. Yes. Oh, as a matter of fact, yes. I will. Thank you for uh, bringing that one up, Richard. Uh, I mean, outside that touchdown, but also um, there was that uh, – that um, celebration play that actually was terrible. Phil, I don't know if you had a chance to see that. Um, oh, yeah. Shane I mean, actually that's... sent it to me. Okay. And I'm like, wait a second. What did he do? What in the world? Chris, the officiating is a real issue. In this. Well, and here's the thing. Just to give you a precursor to my thought of the day, it's going to be on officiating. So – Okay, I don't want to ruin it for you. Talking so about, I don't know, we spent a couple minutes talking about that when we get there, but I just want to know if you saw. I mean, that was I did see it, and that, it that was really unfair. That's completely ruining a kid. Like, I'm not joking with you. Uh, when I say this, this isn't Al Bundy esque going back, but officials took away two games from my high school career that would have put us in the state championship undefeated. <laughs> Back in the de- inadverted whistles. Now that's like a mistake on the option. They thought the fullback had the ball and the quarterback oh. pulled. So they blew the whistle dead, supposedly. So it took, uh, it was back to back weeks. So I know all about officials. So when people see me on Sundays or Saturdays ranting about officiating on my Facebook or whatever I'm writing, it is a personal thing. Because I know you could be better than what they are. And what they right. did to that young man was personal. It was disgusting. Mm-hmm. And there's no place for that because every kid has an opportunity to be corrected by an official. Hey, bro, don't do that again. You, sure. you're, 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 you're helping a kid. Right. Exactly. You pull them aside. Exactly. You're, instead, you took a touchdown away from them. Come on. That was ridiculous. I'm sorry. But no, yes, no, but I did see it. That's why we're going to have a chance to rant about it or talk about it in the uh, the, the thought of the day section. But um, I just think that the only real the, – the, the best chance Oklahoma State has really is going to have – they're going to have a chance to beat Oklahoma. But other than that, they're, they're going to win the the, um, the rest of the schedule. I and mean, they have Kansas coming up. Uh, the Kansas-Oklahoma game, I'm going to talk about that later. That was kind of embarrassing – as well, I'm not going to say Kansas is a good team, but it's I don't know what the heck is going on in the Big 12. So let's just move on to number 14. Number 14, Penn State. Yeah, this is one of the biggest, craziest games, longest game in the NCAA history. Nine overtime. Phil, this was insane. It was crazy. I, mean, I was watching no. it on my phone at a <laughs> Halloween thing going on, and I'm going crazy trying to get other people to react with me. <laughs> I was going, I can't believe, but I didn't realize the new rule either. Like it's conversions, right? right. So I didn't know of that switch. So when right. they went so, into so, over, I'm all for what they're doing. You like Which it. Is, you know, oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, yeah, because it's going to change it up a little bit, right? Because right. everybody's going to kick field. I mean, you, you can spend eons kicking field goals from, from 25 yard line, right? Right. And so after, I think it's two, right? After twice. Oh, it's the third one. It's, okay. After the third it's overtime, they switch right. it up to the then, two point conversion. Exactly. And how many coaches practice two point conversions, right? Or, you know, on the, on the, on the, the team schedule, you may get. 
one on Thursday, and that's the only thing, right? So now you got to throw that in after seeing this crazy horrendous, and it was insane. And I'm not sure exactly what the time was on the game, but I mean, I'm sitting there talking to my friends, yelling, I'm going like, this is insane. I've never seen this before. And like I said, it was the longest game at, at nine overtime. That's nine overtimes. That's crazy. It was awesome to watch it, to be perfectly honest, because it was like, I compared it to those two. There was one fight when I was a kid, and I can't even remember the fighters, but it, they were just going mm-hmm. at each other, right. and they were exhausted. Mm-hmm. And you as a fan are just in awe of right. the effort right. still they're putting in the effort. Both schools exactly. fighting back and forth. Who is going to win and who is going to come out victorious? It really puts... I used to play this video game back in the 80s called 10 Yard Fight. I don't know if you remember no, that. No, no, I don't remember that. It was at the arcade. And crash Busters. This guy, hut, hut, hut. And then you, you're so. But anyway, it felt like an old school, you know, feel to it because right. they're going back and forth and who was going to withstand this. And you're just pulling for Illinois because there's just right. no way they should right. be in this game but exactly, they were, exactly but they were and then for them to victor be victorious it was crazy well i would have felt a lot better had the teams been like ranked eighth and ninth and seventh. i mean i just feel that like and this is where you know when you look at Illinois' record i mean there's no way they should have been there right and you know you look at what penn state was able to accomplish i mean they actually had a great, I mean, they wound up, who they beat in the beginning? Um, they kind of put them on the map. Uh, was it? Who, Penn was State? It, was, yeah. It oh, was. Um, I'll check it for wait, you. Wait. It was. Uh, no, it wasn't. It wasn't Oregon. So Penn State. Oh, it doesn't give me all their games. What the heck? What's well, called ESPN. You never heard of ESPN? If usually this gives me all the games. Okay. Just, well, oh, so they beat Wisconsin, Ball right. State, Auburn. Yes, that's who it was. Right, they right. Beat Auburn. Right. So they have a chance to be all. I mean, this is, you know, speed against strength and everything. Yep. So you would think after, I mean, Illinois, come on, man. I mean, they, they wound up losing to, um, well, first of all, they were a two and five team before the game. Now they're, they're a three and five. Mm-hmm. Um, they wound up losing to a Conference USA team, USTA. So, yep. I mean, how could Illinois stand in there? But again, we, we've talked about this a thousand times, you know, on college football, any given Saturday, like literally we, we've seen it before. And we actually had a chance to see it. I think last week, um, two weeks ago, when the Coastal Carolina – uh, they wound up losing to App State, and that was App State's. That was the the first time since they beat Michigan. Sorry, Rick. Uh, Five thousand years ago. <laughs> so now, <laughs> hopefully, now Rick is like, well, at least now they beat Coastal Carolina. So that'll that'll hopefully take up for the Michigan when they lost to Michigan. But again, surprised. Um, a little upset because you know, I mean, I, I like Penn State. I uh, like the teams. Did not like the uniforms. Um, there we go. Oh, sure. I don't know. Hey, there you go. Is that the University of Texas San Antonio? Of course. Oh my Who else god. Going to be S A. Like, listen, they're okay. the road runners, right? There the you road go. runners. See? I didn't Watch know we went there. Beating Illinois. All right. So that. that's my kind of rant for how State now. Excuse me, Penn State. They're actually they have a huge test. Obviously, they're going to be playing Penn State. Uh, next week, so we're, we're going to see what's going to happen. But again, I had high hopes for Penn State in the beginning of the year, and you know, nine overtimes to a five and two Illinois team. I, I just, you know, at some point, you know, you just have to say sorry, get back to work and practice. So let's move on to number thirteen. Number thirteen, Kentucky. This is an easy one. Uh, Kentucky had a buy, and they wound up staying at 13. Um, not one of those 
depending on kind of who was around him. Again, uh, we've talked about how their year, it's, it's, it's a great year for them. I mean, I'm calling it kind of one of those fairy tale years that um, seasons that they have a chance to really kind of remember um, how the season was, but hopefully they have a chance to kind of stay on course. Now, later on, they're going to play some tough teams. Um, they wound up already uh, losing to Georgia, um, but they got Mississippi State up next, and that should be a good one, but they really didn't move anywhere because of the bye. So let's go to number 12. Number 12, Texas A&M. Now, this is cool because Texas A&M, they wound up moving up three spots to 12 because they beat – a and oh, a really bad South Carolina team, 44 to 14. But again, it's an SEC team. Um, they obviously do have some athletes, but and I'm, I'm encouraged because, um, after beating Alabama, you know, I really wouldn't put anything past them at this point. Now they can kind of win out, um, and if they can then they can kind of prove that, that they need to be um, a contender. They have uh, a bye week. Then they have Auburn and Mississippi. So it's going to be a really interesting season for them. But um, they they only moved up three spots again because they played kind of an a okay uh, South Carolina team. But again, they're supposed to beat them. They're not ranked. And going into it, I think South Carolina was like two and five or something like that. So let's talk about number 11. Number 11, Ole Miss. Now, I'm kind of excited about the head coaching situation here, Phil. I mean, this is – it's kind of fun. We have a guy in Lane Kiffin who literally – I don't know if people know or remember this, but two years ago – he was at Florida Atlantic, and yeah. now he is. This guy nobody's moves around, hurt. but 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 he's doing it though, right? I mean, he's winning. Yeah, I, I have you watched the uh, ESPN Plus show Inside Old Miss? I have not. Is that something I should check out? Yeah, it's really good, actually. Okay. It really del. You know, it's like hard knocks. Okay. It's that same kind of thing, but it's more college football based, and they tell stories of each player. Like the last story was the wide receiver. Uh, oh, it's something currently going on now. Yeah, it goes on oh, wow. within okay. the season. So it's okay. really, and it shows Lane, you know, talking smack, but seeing the kind of personality he has. Mm -hmm. You know, I like that dude. Uh, he's somebody I could see why players resonate sure. with him. Because sure. he, he keeps it 100 with them. And, you know, he backs it up. You know, yeah. they show when they lose to Alabama and Nick and how much it meant to him to, to win that game. So it takes you inside the locker room as well as the dorms and the traditions of who they're playing. The really dorm life? Well, and here's the thing that's kind of interesting on my end. Um because I like his personality, even though he's kind of a, a, a crackpot sometimes. I mean, <laughs> I mean, he really gets his guys started up. So that's what I like. But I mean, going from Florida Atlantic two years ago, getting this job, like currently he is second in the um, SEC West. Yep. And there's only 21 points separate him from Al I mean they lost to Alabama 42 21 right so there's only 21 points that kind of separate him and Nick and this is probably the guy that outside of um of uh Jimbo Fisher at Texas AM I mean this is a guy that's probably gotten closer but also has a chance to kind of be in the same division and literally right now has a chance to kind of you know be up there with Nick so yeah, I think that's he gets, great. he's doing it. it. He's doing it smart, Chris, because he's doing this thing on ESPN Plus. He's very 
what we'd say, modernized himself. He's a okay. character. So he relates to these kids and they really like to play for him. You could see that it matters and he's authentic. And even though he's been around, they even, you know, showcased his past where he went to Tennessee and left right. there and USC. Right. And, you know, are you afraid that this guy's going to do that to your program? You know, that's the thing. But I think that this is where he wants to be and the players really resonate with it. So, it's it's interesting because they're having a good football season and he's really I think he's found his maturity like this is where he's at. So it's really cool to watch that. But at the same time, the product on the field is what they're bringing to the table. Right. They're playing some good football. So right. you know, definitely when, check it out when you're losing to Nick Saban by 21. That's not a bad thing, you know, right? And the. The interesting thing, though, I mean, you talked about um, inside Ole Miss. I mean, now his name is being tossed around for the LSU job. LSU, USC again. Yeah. yeah. Even so the Chicago kind of Bears have mentioned his name, according to a few be, sources. That would be really interesting. That would be really interesting. <laughs> Imagine him with the bear. Oh, oh my well, God. I can't, that would, he, he was so out of it that he, he definitely would not be a good match. For the Bears. Well, maybe maybe the that Raiders, would be the match. That maybe the Raiders, the but not the Bears. I think his personality oh. is too large. Way too yeah, large. But that, that, that's what Ditka had, and they but won. Still, but okay, but that, they that need was, that. That was 30 years ago. That was I know, but they need like, that. Right, but they're not gonna they're not gonna get somebody with that big of a personality. But that's the problem, Chris. That is the problem. That is absolutely because you the problem. Got, you got to put winning first. That's what these schools are trying to do. Absolutely. Like, but anyway, that's the Bears' problem. And Ole Miss' next opponent is Auburn. So the, that should be a, a good matchup. But, I mean, I'm telling you guys, keep an eye on Ole Miss. If they have a chance to win, that, it's going to be really, really I like really the quarterback, too. Yeah. I like the yeah, quarterback. Yeah. yeah, he has some gumption. And I think some folks are talking about his name – in a little little Heisman hunt, at least halfway through the season. Yeah. I'm talking about that. So he's he's one of you know who he reminds me of like Jake Plummer. Remember Jake the snake? Oh my god, yeah, wow. Yeah. He just just in moments he's able to sneak out, make the throw at the last day, make yeah. a play, slick, athletic, more athletic than you think, throws a nice ball. And I think what's also cool is that eventually, I mean, I know I did it. At Notre Dame, eventually the players take on the personality and coach who has that type of personality, who's maybe just a, a, a square peg that's not fitting in the round hole. That's not a bad thing. I 100% and as long agree. as any rules aren't being broken and folks aren't going to jail. Oh, we're having a bad night with Chris's internet again. Damn, damn it. See, Ron G might have to come over there. He like, totally might have to come over now because I thought I had it prepared perfectly. Hello, I Kathleen. Know. Thank you for hanging out with us. Uh, mm -hmm. What I was just saying was the players take on the personality of the coaches. And, you know, his, as long as people aren't getting hurt, guys right. are going to jail, having a, a quirky personality is okay. I totally agree with you. I think that's what a football team needs is a maniacal guy that has a big personality. Sure. That kind. Also, the thing about that I like about Lane and coaches like Lane is that they own it. Right. They own it. Right. Ma Matt Nagy on Sundays blaming a 22-year-old <laughs> subtly. And but not, that – did not sit. It's still not sitting well with me. Like I almost want to fly back out, stay at wow. the Zorich house overnight, and drive to Camp Lake out in Forest. Front of Lake Forest and Lake have Forest. a one-on-one -on -one with them. Uh, yes. Ask. I don't care if you got COVID. Step out of the car. Come outside. I want to, and I want have to a talk to you. That's yeah, because awesome. that's ridiculous what he did. That's and coaches that do that, Chris, they. They lose respect. Right. And I right. think Lane has that respect from his players. And maybe he's had to learn from his mistakes all along the way. Sure. But and that's why, I mean, being in a situation, 
having the hiccups, having the issues that he had, right? Um, I think just makes him a better coach. I mean, makes him more relatable. And oh, he, he can go back and say, you know, I screwed up here. You know, these are my faults. Yeah, exactly. I'm not perfect, you know, blah, blah, blah. He would have been perfect at the University of Miami. I saw Alex was that would have been nice. Oh my that, god, that would have been fun. Talk about recruiting. That would have been fun. Wow. Jeez. I know. <laughs> they messed up there, Alex. Yes, they did. What's All his right. name? What's his name, real quick? From who's that? The two live crew. What's his name? Uh Luke. Um, Luke. Yeah, Luke, old Luke man something. Luke Skywalker. Yeah, Luke Skywalker. There you he, go. He, he met. He he messed up recruiting uh, Lane over there. He should have got mm. Lane. Anyway, all right. Let's move on to number ten. Number ten. Wait for it. And this is a fun one. Uh, this is great. This they're having a magical year. Forget about the fairy tales. Magical at this point. Because the next opponent is Duke, you know they're going to win that one. But wait, I mean, when was the last? Well, actually, I do have that stat. Um, I don't. Darn it. Um, I was wondering when the last time uh, Wake Forest was in the top ten, and interestingly enough, kind of undefeated. But they're currently the best team in the ACC, which they own. I mean. You know, they're throwing up 70 against Army, but again, you know, if this is the best that that, that the ACC has, uh, I think it's going to be a rude awakening for for um, Wake Forest at the end of the year because at the end of the year, they actually play Clemson. And I think this will be a great opportunity for Clemson to not only re- reclaim the, the ACC title, but they'll have a chance to kind of let them know kind of that Clemson is, is still the big boy in the conference and that, you know, the fact that you won, you, you won a couple of games this magical year or whatever is, you know, it's beside the point. Update. They've never made it into the top 10. Never. Never. In 19, hold on. I had it. 1947. Oh, hello. They were 11th. That was okay. as close as they got. At one point, and then their best record ever was eleven and three, and that was two thousand and six. They really? finished. They finished fourteen. That looks like their best record that they ever had. And God bless them. I mean, it's it, it's great for them. I mean, because I'm sure they had they probably had some crazy like zero and twelve seasons and just kind of right. some really rough times. So the fact that that they have a chance to kind of ride this wave, and I'm sure Hell yeah. you know, the uh, the the bookstore and their online store is always going to be crowded. You know, and game days and stuff like that. I'm I'm all happy for I'm so happy for them, but it's challenging. I'm sure in the ACC because the ACC folks are like, damn, they won again, and they're like, this is the best we got to offer. It's like, oh, I mean, because you remember what uh, Dabo said. We talked about this before. But because the, they were talking about kind of ranking power teams, right? And they were saying, you know, basically, um, Dabo was like, "Hey, I can only play the people in my conference. I can't go out of my conference." And the fact that you know we're we're whipping them, and the fact that they're not ranked, I really can't do anything about it. The only thing I can do is take care of my team, take care of my players. But at the end of the year, you know, do you um, is that uh, prohibited on his part because um, I mean he's doing the best he can, but his conference isn't isn't that great. So that's a kind of his argument was right. I mean, you only can play who you got, and that's that's part of this game. It's unfortunate because let's be honest, some of these SEC teams get over on reputation of the league when. You know, you get the bowl season, they're getting whooped by, you know, Texas, San Antonio as well. So <laughs> let's just keep it a buck there. Um, but listen, don't take anything away from Wake Forest. No, I'm, I'm excited for them. I mean, it's, 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 good. it's a great year for them. Mm-hmm. And I think it'll be magical. 
But Brian Piccolo played there. I forgot. There you go. Jim I Summers. I need to get my award. Yeah, up you there forgot right it this week. I forgot about that. Yes. It's all right. Let me next write that week. down. Piccolo Award. Next week. Next week will be Halloween week. Well, there we go. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to ask you to do something a little unique. Yes. I'm going to ask you to do nine and eight back to back. Back to back. You back ready? To back. Somebody's got anything to say about these two? Number nine, Michigan. Number eight, Michigan State University. Now, oh, Phil, how awesome boy. is this going to be? This, this I, is, I heard he turned to my son. I'm like, we're watching that on Saturday. This is going to be huge. The last mm-hmm. time they were both ranked in the top 10 was 1964. And, I mean, th- this game, I mean, you know, we're, we're used to Michigan Ohio State. I mean, right. we're, we're used to some different type of rivals. But you're talking about Michigan, Michigan State. Hey, this could be a new thing. But the fact that they're playing for the Paul Bunyan Trophy, which I had to look up because I didn't I had no idea what they're going to play for. But <laughs> it's a big old Paul Bunyan the Trophy. Bunyan. For. Yes. The and, Bunyan Award. But this is, I mean, I'm pumped. I am excited, yeah. and it's, it's going to be a week away. You're going to watch it with your boy? College game day is going to be here. I'm going to see because yeah. um, I mentioned he's a chef, and oh, if okay. the Bears are home, he's probably going to be cooking for the Bears. Uh, they the are home. The Ooh, they are I don't home. know if you have a chance to see it then. But it's, it's, it's going to be the early game, I think, right? I think it's on game? at 4. No, oh, it's on okay. at noon. It is on at okay. noon, right? Okay. Let me All double right. check because I mean I, I would remember. love to have a chance. So Rick, this is um this is uh if you're watching, big uh, Rick, please tell your wife that you know I'm either gonna come over there, or you can come over here, and we can check it out. But I mean, oh, this is that. gonna be a huge, huge, huge game. That is 12 p.m. There you go. See, there it's gonna be, go. and it's, it's I'm excited. That's 11 o'clock your time. I'm getting oh I know man. I'm getting pumped. I'm getting Jeez. pumped already. I was writing stuff up. This As college game day is going to be, this is going to be insane. Mel Tucker versus Jim Harbaugh, the two bear connections there. There you go. See, they got it's, so much. They got so much, so many layers in this game. Cherie's going to be fired up. Hey. Go Blue, Michigan so, State. Who, you, ask, who, who do you think? Do you have a prediction? Do, do you have a prediction for this game, Chris? Oh. Uh... I mean, I'm I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna jump on the uh, Michigan State coattails. Oh, sorry, Rick. Uh, please, please don't be upset, but <laughs> their performance overall just is not that impressive. And I love Rick dearly. And and after the game, he texts me and he's like, "Man, I I don't know where where they're gonna be in your Super 16, Paul." He was kind of joking, but because they beat Northwestern by 35, but they had a couple of bad plays. So they did put a whooping on Northwestern. This running back starting to get hot from Michigan too. Number two there, the the, the little guy. He's, yeah, yeah, he's running hard. So this is going to be an interesting game. You know, Jim Harbaugh. I'm just a huge Jim Harbaugh fan. If I had my choice, who I would pick to coach the Bears, it would be him, because I think he is a maniacal that would crazy. Be interesting. Oh my God, he would put the McCaskies and everybody on blast and every reporter. Everything would be about winning a Super Bowl. Those are the guys you got to hire. And Jim Harbaugh, he's proven. He did it with uh, San Francisco 49ers. Right, yeah. yeah. I remember when he was coming out of San Diego State, I was like, get hard, get someone here that knows offense, Ooh. prides himself on offensive line play, power football. These things are the Chicago Bears. I mean – you, Man. How many times are you going to try to find the next guru and it never happens? Bingo. Exactly. It never, exactly. it never happens. It doesn't happen. So how about stick with what works? Let's do that. That's what I would say. So Jim Harbaugh, everyone always asks. Zorich has to hate University of Michigan. He did go to Notre Dame after all. Don't underestimate Michigan. Something is different about this year. Well, There's a lot of layers to this. It's like here's a the thing, question Joey. and a comment. Right. Well, thank you very Joey. much. Actually, I do, excuse me, Joey. I do not hate Michigan because I never lost to them. So how can you hate a team you never lost to? So you know, 
I got no, I, I, hey, I, I got no problem with Michigan. Um, I think they're a great program. I mean, Notre Dame thinks they're a great program. They copy their stadium. So there's much respect between those two teams. Personally, I wish that Michigan, we played Michigan on a yearly basis. Uh, when, when I was in school, that was always the first game of the year. And we knew that starting day one, you had to put your big boy pants on if you wanted to finish the season on, on, on top. And we had some great battles. And there's some great players and players on Michigan. There's some great players on, on Notre Dame's team. But oh, yeah. uh, this year, I just think I'm uh, I'm on the Mel Tucker, uh, um, Spartan bandwagon. I have a buddy, Aaron, who's a huge Michigan State fan. So along with him, I'm going to. Chris froze for a second there. Along with Go him. Sparty. Sorry, go Sparty. I'm sorry. Go. So let's move I'm to going it. Michigan. There you I'm go. I'm going Michigan. Okay. All right. You Cherie, score? Our, our Cherie, I'll score. Mm-hmm. Score, I'm going to say, because it's going to be a, a battle. Oh, so absolutely. I'm going to say it's going to be 24 21 Michigan. Wow. 24 21 Michigan. There's my prediction for that game. I'll say, I mean, I'll say a field goal. <laughs> That's what I said. No, no, but you're I going mean, the other way. Well, no, I don't care what's going right. I mean, I don't care what's going right. I just think it's going to be 17 14, game. or is it going to be a higher I, score? 35 30, 35 32. I think, <laughs> I mean, I think folks would be bored out of their mind if it was like 14 17 or something like that. You know, I mean, you would be really, really upset about that. Well, Joey predicted right. that. There you go. Oh, there you go. There you go. We got to. All right. So that, that was kind of crazy. I know I, I apologize about that. Phil. I just kind of threw that on you. I wanted to come by nine and eight because I thought it was going to be kind of cool. So let's move to number seven. Number seven, Iowa. All right. Nothing spectacular here. They actually stayed at number seven because they had a buy. Um, and hopefully they're licking their wounds from that crazy loss uh, against Purdue, which we saw Purdue ranked for the first time in my poll, or Super 16 poll, and they wound up losing literally the next the next week to Wisconsin. So obviously just a flash in the pan, but I wanted to – uh, commend and give the respect to Purdue for beating, and at that point it was a number two Iowa team that I had. So kudos to Purdue, but we see they only lasted a week. But hopefully Iowa can the guys in the locker room practicing, going over fundamentals, being upset, and they're going to take it out on Wisconsin, uh, who's their next opponent. So let's move on to number six. Number six, Oregon. Now, some kind of new. They wound up staying at six, even though they they barely beat UCLA. And again, this is this is where it gets frustrating as a pollster, but also as a former player. I mean, you're supposed to beat teams like this. You're not supposed to just barely beat them. And again, I hate bringing up. Um, teams in the SEC, but you got teams like we talked about Texas a and right? They went out and beat uh, South Carolina 44-14. to 14. I mean, they showed kind of their prominence. They showed their dominance um, over a team, and oftentimes there are a lot of teams that, that just can't do that. Now, when um, Oregon's playing a lesser opponent, that happens, but when it's a conference opponent, then all of a sudden it may be different. Um, Tevion, uh, uh, what, which was that say? Thibodeau, we talked about him a couple weeks ago. Uh, he, at that point, really hadn't showed up. He had the uh, Saturday, he had nine tackles, two sacks. Um, I mean, he's, he's, he's now, after he's healthy now, having the chance to really really kind of make that, that defense a lot better, but also have a chance to go on and play on the next level. But he has a couple games left. So it's frustrating because when you look at their one loss, it's against Stanford, who, of course, 
lost two games after that. After they beat um, Oregon, they wound up losing two games after that um, to some really bad teams. And so, you know, it, it's it's sad that they finally, finally, after all these years, had a chance to have a Pac-10 uh, prominent uh, team that we knew was going to have a chance to make it into the college football playoff um, rankings, but they wound up losing against Stanford. That's just going to make it look bad. So, but they they are in the process of climbing back up. I know I had them lower before, but staying at six. Um, I just hope that that they don't kind of just think about this this game and say, you know, hey, had we not perform so poorly, where would, would, would we have gone? So uh, their next opponent is going to be Colorado. So let's move on to number five. Number five, Oklahoma. Now, I think this may be the first time we've done this, but Oklahoma actually dropped down one spot to number five because – they barely beat a one in five Kansas. Um, that's really the frustrating part, right? Is that, you know, they, they were in there for a while. And Phil, I know you shot me a text and you were like, Oklahoma, what is going on with them? I know. I, could, I, I was watching that game too. And listen, this is football. Like any time you line up, you never know, especially this season. The only one team that's really been consistent has been Georgia and Michigan and Michigan sure. State. Those, you know, even Cincy has had some hiccups here in the midst of games. They've ended up pulling through, which mm -hmm. can help a football team. But OU, they were on the ropes. They were on the ropes. So how do you look at it, though? So, I'm not you, sure what team is going to show up. Yeah. It, especially because you know the Heisman kid, Rattler, mm -hmm. uh, he gets benched. We all know the story and the triumphant moment that he comes in and plays for uh, Caleb Williams. Yeah, Caleb. Uh, yeah, yeah. What, what was the game? He came in and just rallied them, and and then it all was um the um what game uh, was that? Texas. Texas game. Yep. Texas, in front of the whole state. In front of everybody, and everybody's watching yeah. that game. Everybody's watching. He threw up like 500 yards. I mean, it was amazing. And then this game. Well, so, so here's here's the thing about this game. He threw up 170. This game didn't do that well, but I think the great play he had heads was when he play. heads up play, grabbed the ball from from the running back's hand, and actually made the first down, which I thought was great. Oh my God! Talk about. Changing a possible. Oh, by the way, he's a freshman. He's a freshman. Yes. How being, cool is that? Being that heads up, changing Sorry, the whole. My, my dog just came in. My, it's okay. Changing the whole dynamic of that game. If he doesn't make that play, oh. there's a there's a possibility you lose. That's okay. It. Again, that's that's the frustrating. That that's why they're dropping one because I mean, who's showing up? Who's showing up? The, what, what are the whys? <laughs> what are the whys? <laughs> what are the I mean, whys? And, and they have to be you – know, I can't imagine how um, Riley's still in the head coach because, I mean, the, even the first game of the year, I mean, the, they had a hard time beating Tulane. Yes. I think that was the first game. So, yeah, it it's was. just – I don't know who's going to show up. Um, they have Texas Tech – who does not have a head coach? Apparently, I don't even know what happened there. Um, I think they were five. They, they were were they doing well? They were year? doing well, and then you know, they, I think they in another poll, not the super not 16. the super sixteen. Oh, fair enough. So fair enough. I like they to were say. at twenty one at one point, according to sources, and our guy, your former teammate, the alum. He's still living his Texas Tech. Lemuel Stinson. Lemuel. Shout out to him and hey, his hey. speedy recovery. I know he's laid up in surgery. He might be watching tonight, Lemuel. I hope so. Wouldn't that be but, nice? Lemuel, what up, man? Yeah, hopefully you feel better, bro. There you uh, go. Our prayers are with you. But, 
Yeah, Texas Tech. How are they going to do without a I, I, coach? They're not going to have a coach, but yet, apparently, I mean, I don't know what's, what's going to happen. I mean, the they got the coach. other team. They got a, uh, uh, they had a, a hurricane, oh and they gosh. wound up coming out and, and actually almost beating, you know, the host team that they were nice enough to paint the logo and everything else, making a home game. So, who knows? All right, let's move on to number four. Number four, Cincinnati. Okay, Phil, just when I thought I was going to do this for the first time, there's another time they actually drop a spot to number four. Drop, right? drop it like a spot. Drop it like a spot. Cincinnati, Navy. Now, mind you, they've been throwing up points, man. And this is what I talked about last week is that they're yes. showing their dominance. They want to tell them, hey, guys, we belong in the college football, hollow, or the, the college football playoff rankings. This is why we belong because we, we can put up points. The Super 16 poll show uh, rankings. And now they beat Navy by one touchdown. And it I got my little notes here. Chris. It was the last couple. Huh? I froze? No, I said it was close. Oh, yes. Yes. It so here, here's, here's my play by play. The last in 50 seconds of the game, um, Cincinnati's up by seven. They. Navy kicks an onside kick, and of course, because Navy's so disciplined, they actually get the ball. Exactly. And unfortunately, the the quarterback throws an interception, so the game wound up being over. But the fact that they recovered the ball and the fact that they took them into the fourth quarter down by seven – and I had him ranked three, man. I had him ranked up there high. We talked about this. I was on the bandwagon. Yeah. I'm starting to have doubts. Having doubts. But I'll tell you this I've mentioned those service academies <coughs> over the weekend on BHL. That's where they're teaching fundamentals. And Absolutely. that's where they're able to beat these bigger schools because they're practicing and preaching the fundamentals. That's why into the fourth quarter, you see that team in that game. Same with Army. They had Wake on mm -hmm. the ropes. But, you know, you got to pull through, play disciplined football. But to your point, you got to drop them. You got to drop them. I, I agree with it. I agree so with where you're here's going. Here's my there. question to you, Phil. Yep. Do you think this would affect – let's say they went out. Do you think this one game – a seven point win over Navy. Do you think that's going to uh, have a uh, make the the folks the college football playoff rankings think that they can't um, that they don't belong in the top six? Unfortunately, I th I feel like these blog boys that rank these teams allow that stuff. Mm -hmm. Whereas I look at each game is the deck is set. That was Navy Super Bowl. Right. So you're getting your best shot there on Cincy. So for me, for you to pull out and be victorious off an onside kick, they made a play. Obviously, it could have been a different outcome. But the fact is they won the game. I think you shouldn't affect that football team. Uh, but unfortunately, you know, how they do things – it's almost like the NFL's, uh, you know, point system and getting an extra pick in the draft. No one knows the mathematical equation okay. for it. Right. So here, how these guys rank these teams to playoff is, oh, how many points did you score? So it almost sets the deck where you got to blow everybody out in order to. I don't like that. I just like, where's your record? How are you performing? And did you win? Those mm -hmm. are the things that should be set in the deck. And again, that's just how I believe Chris Zorich would do it with his Super 16 poll show. And, and that's what you're doing here. You you dropped them, but you're not saying they're not playoff worthy because they're still in your top four. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, so that's that's what I like to see. Now, had they, so lost, if they lost, if they lost, 
you would have dropped them down. You would have been out, or would they be like eleven? No, nah, no, nah, they'd be like eleven or something like that. Yeah, I mean, exactly. they'd be, they wouldn't drop out because again, I think they're a good team, but right. you have to you have to be a good team. You have to show up. Right, and it's kind of interesting because if we can move on to number three, I got some stuff to tell you about number three as well. You ready? Number three, Ohio State. Now this is kind of this is going to be really controversial. It's going to be the the most controversial point on the Super Sixteen poll show, right? Poll show. How does a let me see? They were one Ohio loss. State was five. How did they jump over an undefeated Cincinnati, right? Yep. Hey, all right. So here it is. Ohio State is consistently beating. Now, also, you got to understand that, and here's where I admire Ohio State in my poll, in our poll, right? That they started top five or top three, I think, but they wound up going down as low as 11 excuse me, low, 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 as low as eight mm-hmm. after the loss to Oregon. Okay? Correct. So now they were able to move themselves up slowly but surely, right, over the over the weeks, dominating teams, dominating them, right? They just you're beat seeing, um, Indiana 54-7. to seven. You're, you're recognizing they're performing at a peak level. They're running Absolutely. on all cylinders. But they were able to make those moves incrementally each each week, excuse me, week by week. And now, guess what? They, they, and I think they performed a lot better than Cincinnati did. Cincinnati's, I mean, Navy is in their conference, right? right. So, I mean, this is a conference game for them. And, oh, by the way, what did Ohio State do? Well, Ohio State had a conference game, and they shellacked them. So that's kind of where I'm looking at this is – you know, how could Ohio State leapfrog an, an undefeated team? But now I'm looking at it and saying, well, you know, you might, I mean, um, Ohio State hadn't had a close game like um, Cincinnati had with Navy. So let me ask you this Michigan and Michigan State are both undefeated. Yes. Iowa has one loss, Ohio State has one loss. They're both ranked over the two teams that are undefeated. This sure. weekend, though, I'm, I can answer this for Chris to speed it up. They haven't played the opponents that Iowa and Ohio State have. So, Chris, that's I'm going agree. from there, right? right. Yeah, but now, Michigan and Michigan State face off. Winner of that game, are they going to be moving up? Could they see that top four? Could they leapfrog? This is going to be, I don't, ooh, it's gonna be an down. interesting question for you on Saturday night. Yes, it will be. It de- yeah, it depends if on Michigan how. goes out and dominates Michigan State, like right. 54 to 6. Ooh, yo, yeah. That's They're going to need to be rewarded for that. Yes. Okay. They'll be rewarded for that. But, you know, also, yep. how would Iowa do against Wisconsin, right? I mean, how would. I'm you know, worried about Iowa. Say? I, exactly, I am, I, I, absolutely, I am on a too. Bye week. That cornerback, I told you, mm-hmm. he was like their leader. That kid. Yep. Their center is yep. going to have to to take the leader. The quarterback is defense too. <laughs> the quarterback's erratic. Uh, so that's going to be the the Big Ten is is interesting. Oh, it's I saw. Be great. Yeah, great. It, it's been like a like he said. I I forget. I rock. Or whatever his name is, Sheree, he was saying it's been, yeah, D-Rock Irish. It's been okay. like exhibition game. And now the the yes. real the real season, D-Rock. D-Rock right? Irish, I agree 100% on that. Yes. It's going to be exciting. And then even, yes. I mean, obviously some of these games are going to be in our top five. Oh, but yeah. Again, I'm just so impressed with what Ohio State has done after a loss. After they suffered a loss. And that's why I say, if you're going to lose, lose early. Yes, because it's hard to bounce back. Depending on what team you are, it's hard to bounce. It's hard to bounce back if you lose later in the season. But these Absolutely. guys lost early and they fought their way back, and that's why I'm so impressed with them. 
is that they, they've always been able to fight back. And I'm not a big Ohio State fan because they use that the Ohio State University stuff, and I think that's a bunch of BS, but I, I want to give them the respect that they're due. But you and hold even, no bias. That's what no I like. No bias, sir. Yes, sir, no absolutely. Bias. Which means a lot of people are like, hey, why isn't their name in your top 16? I'm like, well, I can't wait to talk about that after we're done with this. Well, it could be number two right here. That's true. <laughs> Let's go to number two. Number two. Alabama. Whoops, they were not. Sorry about that, Phil. They were not number two. Um, this is for Alabama, obviously. They actually stayed at number two. Um, they beat Tennessee, but in the fourth quarter, it was kind of crazy. Not by a lot. I mean, the, the score uh, says a lot, 52-24. to 24. Um, Says that they probably dominated. They actually done, didn't dominate until the, the fourth quarter. So, again – if you would have asked me, what did we talk about last week? I think Phil, I was had like a a, a one A and one B, but right now right. I feel confident that you know Georgia is by far uh, number one. So there's, there's no comparison right now. Now maybe um, currently Alabama has a uh, a bye week um, next week, and then come back and play LSU, and then if Florida does something on Saturday against Georgia, then something else may happen. But as of right now, I think Georgia is the number one team in the country, which I kind of number one, Georgia. Spoiler alert. (laughs) Well, Alex Martinez called it. Uh. When you do. Um, a one and two like that that are so close. I mean, right. we have to talk about it both. But I think that right now, again, last week, one A, one B. Now I know that after it was kind of close game going into the fourth quarter with Alabama, um, it, you know, when, when you're talking about these top teams, I mean, something like that can interfere with it, right? I mean, we're talking about Number, number one, number two, number three, number four teams in the country. I mean, now these teams have to be good. They can't be accepting losses or, excuse me, they, they, they can't have wins when they're barely scraping it, you know. And, and again, if the loss was against um, – Aloha, Daniel. Hey, aloha. aloha. Wow. Aloha. Thank you very much. I can't imagine what time it is in Hawaii right now. Um, oh, is it four hours behind or three? Oh, I think it's like like four days before or something like that. I think it's like, he's in the like future. Wednesday? He's in the future. <laughs> Isn't it like Wednesday or something like that over there? Who, won, who wins the Michigan game? Please. <laughs> I want to bet on it. <laughs> but, yeah, I, I just think it's going to be – I mean, when you look at these teams at this level, even somebody like Cincinnati, I mean, you, you want to hang out with the big boys – you have to, this is what I'm saying before. Playing consistent football is hard. Right. Getting Navy's best, getting Tulane's best, getting um uh uh who else is in the conference, whoever is in the conference, getting their best every week is gonna be tough. And so now that you're at that at you're 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 at that top level now, you have to be aware of this. And so it's it's gonna be a challenge for for Cincinnati to see if they can they can hang with the big boys. So well, Let me see. Any chance we can convince Zorich to put him at number one if they wow. beat Michigan State? That would be a huge jump. Um, that would be eight, but it, it depends on how you know Alabama does. Depends on how Georgia does. It depends on all these really really good teams too. So it's three oh nine in Hawaii. So it's there we go. So it's six hours behind East. It's five hours behind Central Time. Oh wow. Yes. So right Look now he's that. like he's he's this awake. Guy's, he's kind of he's about this, to go to work. Is what he's doing. He, or right. he might be coming home from work. That's true. At That's very three, true. Oahu. He might be living on an island. I don't. <laughs> it's only an island. So let's look at this week's Super Sixteen poll. Obviously, he ends it off with Georgia. And let me just say this about Georgia right now. Got to give my boy Chris Zorich some major props. Even though Jim is fired up right now. Where's my Wolverine? <laughs> the reality is 
Georgia looks like the most complete football team in the country. They have dominated the line of scrimmage, both offensively both sides, and yeah. defensively with our boy there at defensive tackle. And listen, I'm, I'm totally feeling this. Let's look back at this week eight, the Super 16 poll show with Chris Zorge. Look at this. He's got his rankings right there live. So we rewarded Iowa State after beating Oklahoma State, uh, which they did not have a chance. They should not have what they did. And we saw Oklahoma State drive down to 15, 14. Same thing that happened with Penn State. They got beat by a uh, two and five Illinois team in quadruple overtime. It took them like 12, 20 hours to play the game. They were 14. <laughs> Kentucky's at 13. We got Texas in them at 12, then Ole Miss, Wake Forest, and then we got the big boys. We got Michigan at nine and Michigan State at eight. That's going to be a hell of a hell of a game. Uh, then we have Iowa, Oregon, five Oklahoma, which we're really nervous about because they just have not been consistent, regardless if it's Rattler in there or Williams at quarterback. Number four, we saw a drop, even though they actually won, um, but it was only one touchdown against Navy. And then we saw Ohio State jump up to three um, because they, they're showing their dominance in the Big Ten, which they have to, in which they are. And then we have Alabama and Georgia. So before we move on to the top five games, yes, just have a small Notre Dame update. Uh, was yeah. at the game Saturday. Someone wants you to know. What about Notre Dame? Why, where are they? Yeah, Nate well, well, wanted to know. On. Okay, hold on. So they they beat <laughs> again a team with no coach. I mean, come on, people. Like, like, I mean, if we throw in a head coach there, okay, what happens there? I mean, if we're exactly. looking at how the games, um, uh, what what the final results are, that's one thing. But I mean, having to practice again. And again, this is hey, this is you know, this is a big rivalry game. But if there's no coach there. That, that takes something away. And then when you look at it, you know, the, in, in the fourth quarter, you know, USC had a chance to kind of come back a little bit. So that, that's the frustrating part is that Notre Dame cannot put teams away. And then again, this is the frustrating thing. And, and obviously I don't have a hotline in Coach Kelly or I'll ask him, but I, I make up your mind with his quarterbacks. And right. it, that's the frustrating thing on my part is that it's not fair. I don't care who you go with. Go so if, the, if, if it's the person you think is going to win the game, keep him in there. And the, the issue becomes, well, you know, the next guy is a little fast. Okay, well, if that's the case, put him in there. And if it's situational, the damn defensive coordinator is going to know who's going to come in anyway. So the idea that you're going to make a team practice for two quarterbacks and, and take up some of their, their offensive snaps, or excuse me, their defensive snaps because mm -hmm. they have to practice against two quarterbacks, it's a bunch of crap, you know. I mean, come on. I mean, they know what's going to happen. So that's my frustration. Even though Notre Dame won, it was great down there. The fans were crazy. Rivalry um, game, right? This yes, is a my, my voice a little hoarse. I was out there, so I'm not going to tell you what time I got out to the parking lot to the party. Um, but we were tailgating <laughs> all day, and that's the reason why my were you my on the sideline, or were you sitting in the stands? I was not fortunate enough to be on the sideline, but oh. um, it, it wound up being a great game. Yeah, and again, pageantry and everything else. It's one thing. I don't think anybody does better than Notre Dame. It's just we have to put a better product out there. And so people say, "Well, hey, you know, they're not the the best. They're not one of the top sixteen teams in the country for you, Chris." Sorry, they're not. Um, they got beat by a Cincinnati team that they should not have been beaten by. And I, I hate to sound like a broken record, but. You, you can't be ranked high if you are – if there's a minute and 30 left and you're down to um, Toledo. I'm sorry. Right. And if, if Toledo would have played their cards right, they could have won that game. So that's my Notre Dame rant. So well, let's Who does on. Notre Dame have next real quick? They have North Carolina next. North, okay. So they're no, probably no, no, not going to – No, I'm sorry. No, no. They have um, – well, I should know this. They have Navy – Hold on, Navy. Let me look it up for you. I think it's Navy. No, no, North Carolina, North Carolina. I'm sorry. 
Fighting Irish North football. Carolina. You are right. North, North Carolina. Carolina, Saturday at 7.30 East. Yes. 8.30 Central. Then Navy yes. on November 6th. Holla. So it's gonna they're going to have a hard time moving up in the Zorge Pole Show. Mm. They finish up with Virginia, Georgia Tech, and Stanford. Again, no ranked team. So that, that's the challenge, right? That's the challenge yeah, that's right there. That's the answer. challenge. Not right only there. with my poll, right, but when you talk about right. the most important one, well, let's say that the second most important second. one is the college football playoff ranking, right? Exactly. So, where do they fall in there? That's the that's the, that's that's the one that's going to get them to the better bowl game, things like that. So, if, if they don't have any more ranked opponents, they got to be praying that some of these uh, these these better teams or the teams that are ranked higher are going to start losing some games. Right, every week, every up. week, every week he does this. He gets pumped up, fired up. He's giving you, the fan, a look inside the bald brain of the three-time All-American. What are his games that you must see this weekend? Chris, what do you got this week? Well, you know the first one. The first one is going to be down. <laughs> it's a layup. East Lansing yes. is going to be the Wolverines. Against Sparty, I think it's gonna. It, that's gonna be just a fabulous, fabulous game. I'm gonna take that, and I know it's gonna be a game for the ages. But yes. again, you know, since 1964, these are this is a huge tradition for these teams because I'm sure these teams have been playing since the Big Ten was created. And you know, this is kind of what Michigan needs, the state of Michigan, to have yes. this type of rivalry. And again, when they're ranked so high, and I mean, I think that's what's special about it. But if you think about, I mean, since 64, I was born in 69. So you're talking about like almost 56 years. I mean, that's that's wow. kind of embarrassing at one end. So, again, it's going to be an exciting game. The Another exciting game is going to be Penn State at Ohio State. I think this is going to be a big test for Ohio State because currently they've only beat one ranked team, even though they've been dominating folks. Yep. And Penn State's going to be coming uh, off of a, a really, Bitter really loss. bad loss. Really, really this bad is- loss. This is the measure of a coach right here. How does he get Penn State amped up for this game? That's perfect. Going to be the showcase there. Now he wins this game. I mean, all bets are off, right? It's, it's just going to be crazy, but ooh, that's going to be a tough one. Yeah, it's, tough. it's definitely a measuring stick for Ohio State, like you said. Because mm-hmm. Michigan, uh, Penn State has some players, you and I, and um, and the world. I would think, freaking Vegas is painting gold ceilings for a reason this week because nobody was betting on Illinois. I'll tell you that. You must Absolutely not. Stop. Absolutely not. Which, again, that was, <laughs> that was a rough one. Yes. All right, so I think another exciting one, we kind of talked about this a little bit, but I'm, I'm kind of on the Lane Kiffin bandwagon, so he's going to be playing Auburn. I think this is going to be another big test for him. And as I mentioned before, each week is going to be a, a bigger, bigger test for him because he's getting closer and closer, at least this season, yeah. to kind of his mentor in Nick Saban. So um, even though you've had other coaches kind of do it, I mean, he was that kind of that young punk kid who, you know, folks were really too sure about. And, you know, he didn't go right from uh, Alabama to Georgia. You know, he had to go from Alabama's, you know, whatever system to someplace else and to, to FAU to I me. Mean, he had to take a little different route, but he's back there now trying to prove himself. Um and interestingly enough, I think Georgia taking this week off. Do they, you know, work on fundamentals? What do they do? Um, Florida, you know, have, again, have a chance to prove themselves. Lost a couple of games that they shouldn't have. They would have been in the hunt, but I think the Georgia-Florida game is going to be an interesting matchup. And lastly, for number five, um, I think the Iowa at Wisconsin game is going to be something that we have to look at because, you know, how how was – Iowa going to bounce back from this devastating loss against Purdue, and Purdue turns around and loses against Wisconsin, right? So you're out on that and saying, so now it's going to be interesting. Wisconsin beat Purdue. Purdue beat Iowa. What's going to happen? Iowa's ranked seventh in this poll. So it's going to be an interesting matchup. Yeah, I like this. Expect to lose to Purdue and then have a bye week on top of it. Right. 
this I mean, is a showcase. They're, they're feeling terrible, man. I mean, exactly. I'm surprised the guys. I'd be surprised if guys who went to class this week, man, because I'd be for, it, for it Renz, hard. He probably had them in training camp. Oh, I would. I would. Hey. I would hope so. Like Doubles. Coach Holt said, Double you guys, Triple yeah, you guys are double, triple sessions, triple sessions. I, I'm going to be interested to see how Iowa comes out the gate there. Again, we called it here on this show every year. Iowa gets up there and then they lose to some obscure opponent. Yep. That has been the history. But let's see how they answer. Answer the call. Chris Zorich wants to see how you fight. How you fight against Wisconsin, which is always a tough matchup. Anyway. Tough matchup. Chris so, Zorge, every week he does the Super 16 poll show. Every night here, Monday nights, 8 o'clock. You can listen to the podcast version on every podcast streaming application. Also, do me a favor. Go over there and subscribe to Chris Zorge's YouTube channel. What are you doing? Follow him on Twitter. Follow him on Instagram. He's still learning how to use Instagram. Oh, yeah. His wife's Just probably like, answering for him, but like, still yeah. follow. Still I'm trying. Follow. I'm trying. <laughs> I'm trying. <laughs> Next week on your birthday, Chris will shout you out, Mr. Daniel Perez from Hawaii. Nice. Actually, sure Perez will. should be shouting us out. Who no. gets to live in Hawaii, for God's sake? No kidding. God <laughs> right? bless Daniel. That's awesome. <laughs> also, uh, Chris, we had an amazing time uh, meeting each other finally. All of us coming for together. The first time physically, we actually did the bro we hug. To, we yes, the hands. bro hug. We actually had a chance to hug his wife. So, you know, yes. I mean, we actually had a chance to, to see each other in person, which was great. The family got together. We're going to end this show a little bit of taste of that weekend. But, Chris, every week, every week we get your final thoughts with Chris Zorich on this show. And, and, and this is not really a, a huge, huge issue. But, um, and, and normally we, we've covered several things. But it just it's kind of frustrating when you talk about officials and their calls. Now, I was taught by my coaches, both in college and high school, on a professional level, not really, but whatever the official says, I mean, they're not going to change it. But now they have instant replay and everything else. And Phil, you have a kind of a different experience because, you know, you've been coaching for a long time. And mm -hmm. I know kind of the officiating can kind of get under your, your, um, your skin sometimes. But then I think about folks like, John Wooden, who literally coached from his, from his bed sitting down. He never raised his voice at players or the referees. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's the mentality that I would like to take if I was a coach. But the idea that some of these calls are making like larger predictions or excuse me, larger um, results in the game. And I'm all for reviewing, but at what point do we like not have a review of certain things because I mean the fact that the, the dude going in the end zone when he did a little high step it was almost like he wasn't sure what he wanted to do he did like a little Dion for a minute and he came back down and, did, and he's like right. hey what's up you know and then he well, got a penalty for that we've seen worse in college that's oh the God. here's the issue Chris for me because I'm the anti Zorich and John Wooden I'm a freaking like an M80 going off. I, I would get thrown out of games to motivate my team if it needed to. Sure. The refs never really did throw me out, but I went across the line. And okay. I knew what I was doing because I wanted everybody on the team to know I have an issue where I feel like it's being officiated unfairly. You have a job to do as an official. Pay attention to your job. Mm -hmm. Once you start watching the football and you're not paying attention and doing your job, then you're taking, a, again, especially in football, the Cherie, yeah, the Princeton-Harvard game, that was completely atrocious. I don't know if you saw that, uh, what happened there. But the officials, even in our experience that weekend, Green Bay-Chicago, there's over seven plays that were officiated wrong that those officials mm -hmm. are being investigated on. It shouldn't have to be that. That's why 
I feel like in this day and age with the technology that we have, sure. that a head coach has to be a presence in an official's ear that, he, oh, we're not going to be able, we have to pay attention here because a Toshin or whoever, Zorich mm -hmm. is going to be all over my ass this week. And that's unfortunate, but that's what this day and age is. And, and it's unfortunate because these guys rely, well, if I get it wrong, they'll see it upstairs. And that shouldn't be how you officiate games. It's so poorly officiated, and we're looking at every game. And now you're allowing judgment. Was it a, was it a, uh, what is it, targeting? Think about these targeting things. See, and, and, and this, is the, this is the thing that kind of gets under my skin is that, and you see it more probably on, on the professional level with officials. So yeah. they're always talking to, to the guy in New York who was the head official for X, Y, and Z, right? right. But he's going to be partial. And, and sometimes when you hear him talk, he's like, well, um, yeah, and it's like, yeah. look, man, you've been doing this for 30 years. You know, say yes or no. But exactly. oftentimes he doesn't do that, right? Right. It's just kind of waiting. And because at the end of the day, I mean, he's taking care of his guys who are his are, – who are the umps, right? Who are yeah. the refs? So right. he's not. He, it's almost like he's already biased, right? He, he's already gonna, he's already taking the side of the official, and they're supposed to be unbiased. Some guy in New York just watching players. Oh well, I don't necessarily care. Well, yeah, you've been. Uh, I mean, everybody knows you. You're like the head official. Right. You're making uh, thousands of thousands of dollars on the side because you do appearances and you do seminars and everything else. So you want to keep that going. So you're gonna say, hey, I'm, I'm gonna be this guy. So unfortunately. Even the people who are supposed to kind of monitor them are going to take the, the 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 official side anyway. And for so long, I think now the refs are. I don't think they're full time in the in, in the NFL. No, they're allowed to to have other jobs. This has been a, a point of the. Well, well, it was a huge point when yeah. when when I was you were playing for the Bears. It was yeah. a huge issue for us because right. the NBA guys. You have full time guys there, yeah. But when when you got a guy who's working a nine to five or a job, you know he's flying into the, into the, the the city that he's going to be playing in, probably on let's say Friday after work. I mean, who's to say he doesn't have a project due? Or and, he had know, a bad day, exactly. or he has exactly. bias in it. That this is there's certain things that all of football need to change. Sure, and. I'll just be real quick on it. Real quick. Antiquated chains, right? We have these chains. We roll them out, right? And John, uh, maybe he's an official on the high school level. John right. Smith's holding right. one. And some other guy who has yeah. these Richard Simmons workout guy down in the other end, right? Right. And they put a little click on the yard marker right. so it doesn't lose its point, right? Right. <laughs> The officials should stand at the first down mark. You couldn't, you can't have an old man who's in, out of shape running behind a guy spotting the ball where he thinks that per this is so anti. Just here's the first down mark. Stand a first down guy. It's a billion dollar business. Right. Be a camera right. on there. Right. Let's put a chip. In right. the football, right. if it crosses the line, it's Bingo. like the NHL goal. Right. And the freaking there siren right. goes off. Exactly. exactly. It doesn't go off unless it crosses that line. Right. We have this. Right. We got to alleviate these. Our, we're going to. Jim Nance is going to lead us through this with Tony Romo. Right. No. Right. We need to have it set in stone, especially in football. They've added technology to basketball. They've added technology to the NHL game. They need to do it just to alleviate down and distance. Sure. We're still going to sure. have the the guy that's throwing the holding call mm -hmm. on a big run. Right. He's still going to be a jackass. Mm -hmm. We're still You're going to live with that. That's football. Because but, offensive linemen never hold. So Exactly. You know. They never hold or – Packer linemen never hold. We'll just say that. Yeah, we saw what happened there. Yeah, we saw that. So that, I just think, just putting a referee right at the down marker so sure. he can get a correct, appropriate. So just think of the angle, Chris. These mm -hmm. guys, like yourself, you're a big dude. You're running down trying to tackle a guy. He's tackled. Oh, where did his knee? I'm guessing it went right here. Right. Up, right. first down. 
Right. No, no. It's a full yard short. If you're just standing there, you could see it. I'm in 300 section. I could see it. Yeah. So the chip in the ball could On also. On both ends, I like that Thunder Girl 80. I like that. I mean, that's an idea yeah, to have. It's, both, and, you know, it's on both ends. It's, it's the, the, all the ball has to do is cross the goal line. And, it, and same thing with the first down. You can incorporate it there. These things would alleviate stuff. And unfortunately, they And I think there it. should also be, again, a non-partial party that's calling for both sides. Because right. we're hearing that coaches are afraid to make a call because they're going to lose their timeout or they're right. going to lose um, one of what. Uh, yeah, they uh, incorporated this the, challenge. You right. throw the flag. Right. You met, no, it should automatically be fair. Right. Exactly. Wait a second. Exactly. This doesn't look right. There's a, there's a eye in the sky doesn't lie. So you have one official, the replay guy. Mm-hmm. And he's got he got that you know that camera that's floating right. on hey, a string right. exactly. If you're going to do that, that's, that's hey. going to be the the end. All he's the ref the cam, ball. right? Exactly. The exactly. ref cam. You can put one of those. All. Put one of those. Uh, one of those chips or one of whatever in the again in the ball. So now yeah. the the that one camera only follows the ball. Yeah, it knows where the For ball is at all yeah. time. I love it. Well, we could fix all this, Chris. Yes, we could. Yes, we could. Let only me tell you this. More time. Yes. Let me tell you this. Every week, I, Chris or I suggest a show. Do you have a show that you want to tell people they should start watching? I do. If you want to get like really freaked out, so yes, I actually I wonder if it's the same show. No, is this it? is no. I went way back here. So this is oh, okay. something where I was never a Dune fan because it was just kind of like that weird kind of like D and D kind of space fantasy thing, which yeah. I really didn't. I mean, I like Star Wars. Love yep. Star Wars. But I yeah, didn't get too. into the fantasy book part, right? Right. But apparently, that's what this whole Dune thing was, right? So I hadn't. I mean, I, the, the 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 original Dune I think was in '84 with Sting. I really, I think I saw it once, and I was like, eh, whatever. But yeah. I, I went to go see the Dune that's in the movie now, and then I do my little research, and I'm like, okay. So then I'm, I went and watched the original one with um with uh the Sting in there. That was crazy. But then I didn't realize that there was a series, or a, it was a mini series that was on during the 2000s on the Sci Fi Channel. Now, the, really? the, the Sci Fi is a little jacked up. I mean, it was yeah. 2000s. But I'm actually on episode two, and it's really interesting because they actually a little bit more in depth in the whole Dune story. But I really loved the. So, so this is kind of a movie slash old school miniseries from the 2000s. But I think if you watch the, the one from the 2000s, you will definitely appreciate science fiction and the rest of the story because at the end of this current Dune, I'm not telling you, it's not a spoiler, but there's going to be a different, another part. Even in the right. beginning, it says Dune part one. Okay. So obviously there's going to be two, maybe three parts, but it, 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 it really looks like a great saga. So that was my my so show was you're going down a Dune. A Dune. So the movie was good though. Yes, Ooh. I really enjoyed the movie. For okay. for somebody who didn't know anything about it, going in totally cold, yes. really, really, really enjoyed it. Really enjoyed okay, it. Okay, so I'm gonna check that out because I now, of course I the main fan base of huge Dune people are like, oh well, this wasn't right, and this 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 thing wasn't right, but you know. Yeah, I gotta go back into the Dune history. Mm-hmm. I remember that movie and I didn't like it. It's the yeah. floating guys or yeah, something. It was, you know, I didn't it was like just, it back uh, in the day. Right. But, but this, <laughs> this one has not, I mean, this one literally, and I think a lot of people just kind of like, um, who's the guy who did Avatar? I forget. Uh, James Cameron. James Cameron. Right. Yes. So you talk about how he wanted to do Avatar like years and years ago, but the, 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 technology. the technology just wasn't there. The same guy with this Doom guy he was a big fan of the books, but mm-hmm. he never felt that. And he he became a director and it was always in the back of his mind, but he never knew he knew that the technology wasn't there yet. And it's it looks fabulous. And they actually, instead of using green screen, they actually shot in the Middle East, like in the sand dunes. And it was like it was insane. They were talking about how like it was, you know, 100 degrees, and they had to have these 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 cooling tents for the actors and stuff like that. So that that's my little uh 
There it is. Dune. Dune. Check it yeah. out. My show, I'm going to tell you, to get you ready for Halloween. No. Uh -oh. It is Midnight Mass on Netflix. Midnight Mass. It okay. surprised me with the story and how it correlates to religion. That's all I'll say. Okay. It, it's kind it's very well written and it kind of it, it it tap dances on religion and it's a horror movie. So some people might get offended if you're deeply religious, please <laughs> understand. But check that out. Speaking of Halloween, we'll be back. Bears Hour Live. I'm scared already. I'm scared already. That's awesome. TTNL will be live with the rant. Bears versus 49ers. This Halloween will be live and will be it'll be the fastest Bears hour live ever because I gotta take the kids out trick-or-treating. I, I, I don't know what's gonna be tough. They're gonna be dead. Come dead. be like, wait a minute. And these sons of bitches, wait, 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 wait. They're like, Dad, come on. We, we gotta go, we gotta go. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I, I don't I'm imagine what they're gonna imagine. Your wife is gonna have to turn because she's gonna have to pull the plug. She's already put the yourself. the the limit. So we'll I was see. like, okay, we'll, we'll get see. it done. It's a she's 12 o'clock game. Thank cut you. It, cut it, cut it. You're yeah, like, exactly. no. My rant will go. Well, this week it's another great show with Chris Zorge. Every Monday, we start now at 8 East and we go, we bring you through the top 16. On the Super 16 Pole Show with Chris oh, Zorge. Show. Every Monday night, 8 o'clock. He'll be back next Monday night. And we'll be talking about Halloween and everything that went down over the weekend in college football. Obviously, the headliner being Michigan, Michigan State. It's uh, another football weekend coming up. I hope you enjoyed this past weekend's games and all of the shows here at TTNL. Uh, for Chris Zorich, I want to just end this show with a little look back. I put this together of all of us, including Cherie, Aww. all meeting up together. Uh, if you're a patron or a TTNL fan or you're new here and you've been brought here by this guy, now my family, my brother here from another mother, Chris Zorich, you'll get a taste of this. Next year, we'll be doing the same thing meeting up with all of you fans and having a great time. So I hope you enjoyed this little shout out song to end the show tonight. Shout out take number lives. Shout out. I know you hear me, baby. Shout out. I know you see me, baby. Shout out. We gotta holler at you. Keep it 100 cool. We gotta show love to you. Shout out. I know you hear me, baby. Shout out. I know you see me, baby. Shout out. We gotta holler at you. Keep it 100 cool. We gotta show love to From the fans in the stands to the follows on the gram. On the Thanks for your support. Showing love in the DM. We stay spent and strong. Fight together till the end now it's time to shout out worldwide friends and fam like the network that keeps it real 100 crew so many in the world that i gotta show love to for some this part see the show is at its end but for me it's so important to thank the charter members and the fans build the network speak the truth through the tape never run around the truth no narratives we create set them straight no bubble screen on fourth and eight audio chain getting nervous cause keeping them up too late that's it no more to say to get the shot of vital but hurry up cause the postman's getting homicidal shout out i know you hear me baby shout out i know you see me baby shout out we gotta holler at you keep it 100 cool we gotta show love to shout out i know you hear me baby shout out i know you see me baby shout out we gotta holler at you keep it 100 cool we gotta show love to
Thanks for watching the Super 16 Poll Show with Chris Zorich. Like, subscribe, and comment. This has been a special presentation of the Tape Never Lies Network. Performance over pop.